Previously on Card Boss, we explored strategies how to still make a profit even with PSA Express submissions priced at $150. Today I'm going to do a short PSA review where I basically thread a needle at the very expensive submission cost and break down all the numbers for you guys. Welcome guys to the Card Boss channel where we discuss cards, money, investing. If you like this sort of content and haven't subscribed, please do so now so you don't miss future content like this. Alright, let's go. So if you guys haven't checked out my earlier video on what sort of raw cards to buy to send to PSA at $150 per sub, do check out that last video and I posted a link in the description below. In that video, we went through several examples on what sort of cards you should be looking out for and around what price point would be feasible to send into PSA at a whopping $150 a card. $150 grading fee is no joke, so it's important that every single card is scrutinized properly before sending in. So understanding the economics is important to determine what kind of card that you should send in. In this video, I'm going to present a small sample result of what we're discussing today. So what I've got in front of me today is a PSA Express order at $150 per sub plus $29 of shipping insurance. There are four cards in this submission. So on average, the grading fee per card is $157.25. So let's check out the cards and see how I did. First up, here we go, Kobe Bryant 1996 EX 2000 Star Date, very nice looking card and a very popular Kobe. Some consider this as uh, one of his RCs for, for 1996, but unfortunately EX 2000 has a true rookie. Hang on, let me pull it up, yep, just the one, here we go. Cool. Anyway, the star date may not be his true rookie, but it's a stunning card and you know, it's extremely tough to grade. So let's check it out. PSA 8, near mint. Average, but not the worst. Alright, let's go on. Moving on. Here we go. 1997 Tops Generations Kobe Bryant Refractor die card. This is Kobe's second year. And I believe the refractor doesn't have a serial number. Nope, it doesn't. Yep, so let's check out the grade now. PSA 9. Not bad, not bad. Considering what we know about the difficulty in grading die cards. You know, and which has additional pointed edges and, and corners. PSA 9, not too bad. Right, last two cards here, just gonna pull up both together. Here we go. Same card, identical card, 1997 Hoops High Voltage Michael Jordan, and both grades are PSA 9. Although these are just 9s, they are big hits, which I'm gonna explain a bit later. Alright, cool. Overall, no gem tens, not a complete bummer. If you recall about mention and about the video I mentioned before, you know, with Nike's cards, you're actually aiming for nines rather than tens. Oh no, actually you should be aiming for tens, but tens is just gravy, and nines are more realistic targets. So let's go break down the numbers now. Kobe Bryant's star date was seven hundred ten dollars ship, while the Topps Generations Refractor was five hundred sixty four dollars. The Jordans high voltage were about $719 and $618 ship. So we put all our purchase costs in a spreadsheet below, you know, totaling our purchase cost to be $2,610. You add the grading fees of $629 over four cards, which is the $157.25 per card earlier. And our total cost after grading equates to $3,239. Now, Let's look at some recent sales history on each card. Kobe started has a fair bit of transactions and a PSA 8 has been trending around the $1,000 range, but recently dipped a little. Kobe Tops Generations Refractor only had two transactions in recent months with prices between $650 to $930. I think $650 was a steal as the fair price on this Kobe would roughly be around $800. Jordan High Voltage PSA 9 had only one transaction at $1,875 back in August. But a more recent BGS9 sold for $21.50 in October. 
So based on my estimations, I've tabulated the rough selling prices of the fees and shipping for each card as follows, totaling to $4,750 and making a profit of just around $1,500. That works up to be around a gross profit of 32% for roughly a three month turnaround. Of course, the profits are greatly skewed towards the Jordan, but as I pointed out, the reasonable expectation for the submission of 90s cards would come out at 8, which will more or less break even and to profit when you hit 9s and up. So one thing you guys may or may not have noticed is that all the 4 cards in this video was purchased raw from eBay. Now there's a lot of talk and advice about the difficulty of buying raw cards from eBay to grade. I'm not saying it's a simple process, it may look easy here. But a word of caution is the amount of cards I had to filter in order to get myself to fork out $150 grading fee per card. So please be careful and it doesn't mean that you can just go up to eBay, buy a bunch of raw cards and send them in for $150 each and hope for nines like today. I guess you probably would like to know what sort of conversion rates on my raw cards. If I were to guess, it's probably around 10% for cards from the 90s to 2015 and around 20% for ultra modern cards. To many of you, that's an extremely low number and I completely agree. But without having access to any card shows or trade nights from WRM, eBay is my primary source of purchase. So for those who are in similar boat as me, I'm a living proof that it's actually possible to turn a profit from 1. Buying cards almost exclusively from eBay and 2. Making a profit despite a $150 PSA submission fee. But with a caveat that 1 and 2 is done correctly. Alright, thanks guys for watching and hope to see you guys again. Carbos out.